All right, and we're back. Amazon, turn on mono price lights. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. Let's start with the one that is still printing, and then we'll check out the one that's done. This is looking really nice. Wow. So look at that staircase going all the way up and all the way up here. And it's at 70% done right now. That is beautiful. Okay, let's check out the one that's done. Wow. This came out really nice. That's so cool. That's like the amazing thing about 3D printing. Even if you're not like really into designing the stuff yourself, and I've gotten a bit into that by it, just these designs, like these incredible designs. And you'll see if you get a 3D printer, it's not like simple, just drag and drop and print. Like it's really like there's a lot of technical stuff. Like here, everything that's green, as well as these, that's all modifications that I've added to make this printer better. Even this toolbox over here, and this toolbox over here, and this spool holder up here. So there's a lot that you can do to really enhance the experience, but what I'm really into is, instead of buying a three to $6,000 printer, just modifying a $300 printer to get it to print. I mean, this thing printed beautifully. It's absolutely flawless. It's just incredible. So yeah, if anybody's interested in this, for me, my goal was how can I make this accessible so anybody who wants to print a 3D printed prosthetic hand can do it. And the first step was the printer can't cost three to six thousand dollars because that's going to be a huge deterrent for anybody. So originally I got a three thousand dollar printer at work and I returned it and I started playing around with the $300 printer. And that was my goal. How can I print a hand on this inexpensive machine? So I started to research and modify. So this here, this is called the Z-Brace. And what it does is it holds this Z-axis in place. So when it's printing, it doesn't shake around as it's moving because it's like a jackhammer the way this thing moves and because it's stabilized you can print faster and you can also print higher quality so that was one of the most important mods these right here they hold the thumb wheels like that right there it holds it in place and by holding it in place it remains level so you don't have to re-level it as often and those are definitely two of the most important mods. Like that alone is a complete game changer. This filament holder, it's like a filament guide and it's just really nice. It moves back and forth as it's printing. This is essential too. So the way that the Monoprice Maker Select version two is, is it can't actually have a full spool of filament which is just ridiculous so you print this piece out it locks in over here and now you can have a full spool i just like this for you know tools i can just pull out real quick and i like these toolboxes a lot too so i'll include all those links in the description below and i'll also include links to just in general, all the stuff that I'm doing and the stuff that I've bought, because my big thing has always been minimal amounts of money spent for maximum value when it comes to technology, trying to make technology accessible. Because nobody's going to spend three to six thousand dollars to see if they're into a hobby. Hey, I wonder if I'm into 3D printing. <laughs> Let me spend three thousand dollars and find out. Let me spend six thousand dollars to find out. You're not doing that. Now if you spend three hundred dollars and you're into three D printing, then at that point, you know, a year later or a couple years later, you might be so into it that you say, you know, I really want to get my hands on like a crazy machine. But that's like somebody getting into online gaming 
and then saying I want to take the game to the next level. I'm going to get a gaming PC or starting to build a PC and saying I'm going to build something crazy. You don't drop $3,000 in the beginning. It just doesn't make sense. So up until this point, that's what 3D printing entailed. And the problem is, is that if you've never 3D printed, this is definitely not the easiest machine to use because everything's manual. I mean, everything's through here. Choosing the different settings like this, which is fine. Leveling the bed, it's all manual. But what I really like about this machine is that when stuff broke, I had to learn how to fix it. And I did. Be sure to follow my Twitter and check out my GoFundMe campaign to help raise money to 3D print prosthetic limbs for kids. Links in the description below.